And I too greet you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What a sincere honor and privilege it is for me to be here today. Although humbled at the circumstances that bring me here that your pastor is uh, ill with the bronchitis and I know his heart is to be here and I count it a privilege to stand in his place but more importantly to stand in this holy place. I thank God that we are able to gather here today and I can see your smiles. Show them to me. Come on. Show me your smiles. Amen. Amen. We've only gotten acquainted with people recently from here up. And this part has been missing. Sometimes for better, sometimes for worse. I know for a good cause, obviously. But it is my privilege to be here today. And uh, today is Father's Day. Uh, it's only been about 48 hours ago that I discovered that I would be here. And uh, although I've been uh, preaching for uh, it's five plus years, uh, I still don't always know where I'm going to go, what I'm going to say. So uh, uh, I quickly shifted gears from whatever I was doing. Well, I was getting ready to go out to lunch with good friends, but they turned me down. <laughs> it was Stephen and Gail. <laughs> so that shifted real quick, and uh, I went into the preacher mode and went into my office and started praying, thinking, and contemplating, and all that sort of thing. And so uh, uh, I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to go with the family theme. Uh, so today, uh, in honor of God's Word, uh, we're going to be going to the Psalm, Psalm 127. If you want to go there, if you have a, a copy of God's Word, and uh, if you're able to and you would wish to, would you stand in honor of God's Word as we share it together? Five verses, and we're going to read the entire five verses. Psalm 127. Hear the word of the Lord. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat. For he grants sleep to those he loves. Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. May God add his richest blessings and the understanding of it through the Holy Spirit. You may be seated. So, I, I have heard that too often we discriminate against our dads by charging them to bear the difficult task of making a family or a home a good and godly home while giving our moms a beautiful gift and telling them how special they are. Well, so today, I want to shift that focus. I want our focus to be where I believe it should be, and that is on our Heavenly Father. And the critical importance of seeking His participation in making every home what He intends it for it to be. And I believe this psalm is that. I believe this psalm is exactly that. I'd like for us to take a look at, at our homes today. Our homes are in trouble. Our homes are in danger. Our homes, for many, are dying. And while that 
may be true in society in general, at the same time, I know that God is at work in His people, by His Word, through His Holy Spirit, creating and recreating homes that honor Him, homes that serve Him, homes that are positively affecting the world in which they live. So today, you, you may be sitting here and you say, well, I'm not a dad. Or I'm not a parent. So I'm just going to check this sermon off as one I can go to sleep in and have nothing to do with. Well, that's not going to happen. Because I promise you that this message is for everyone. Whether you're a parent, going to be a parent, or maybe you're someone who's even single, or married and not a parent, perhaps you could be a foster parent, perhaps you could adopt a child, perhaps you could be a big brother, big sister, <coughs> excuse me, it's been a while since I've preached, <laughs> the preaching voice has gotten dusty. So I've got to, I got to get it lubricated. And my wife would say, and tone it down just a bit. <laughs> Bless the Lord. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> or perhaps today this message is for you if you're a grandparent. Because what I'm going to say not only speaks to parents, but it speaks to grandparents as well. And then... If you don't fall in any of those categories I've just offered, let me give you one more. This applies to the body of Christ. Because you see, as the body of Christ, we are responsible for helping bring our cheer, children up in the fear and the nurture of the Lord. We have responsibility with the parents, with the grandparents, to help produce godly spiritual lives so you see it's for everyone that is here so let's take a look at it and see what god's word says well that opening verse says it all unless the lord builds the house the builders labor in vain unless the lord watches over the city the guards stand watch in vain. So that's the very beginning of, of, of what we need to understand about family life. Listen, it all begins and it all relates to the Lord. I did a funeral this week for my cousin's husband and a, a, a thought occurred to me as we celebrated a life we memorialized a life lived and a, a loss of death but as I was preparing to lead that service to officiate a thought occurred to me all of life is about relationships. Stop to think about it. All of life is about relationships. And of course, the, the first and the most important one is our relationship to God. We, we are created by Him and we are created for Him. And you see, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. And we're given the privilege to be called the sons or the children of God. That's our very purpose for being here, is it not? 
So, and Jesus put it this way when asked, Master, what are the, what, what are, what's the greatest commandment? <laughs> and what were there? Something like 528 or 613 different commandments that uh, the Jews had when he was living? <laughs> How could you pick one out of 613 or out of 528? And Jesus said this. Well, the first is, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and have no other God beside Him or before Him. Worship Him only. So number one is worship God. Love God with everything, everything. And the second is like that. You should love your neighbor as you love yourself. And basically Jesus said, this is life. <laughs> this, this is all of life. Well, if that's true, then should it not make sense that to have the home and the family that we want and that we need would originate with God? And, 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 and you see, I capitalize Lord in the Old Testament scriptures that's the name of God Adonai Yahweh Jehovah God and unless God builds the house and here I think it's it's safe and fair even to say the whole the family. Unless the Lord builds the home, the family, the builders, who's the builders? Everybody I just talked about earlier. Parents, grandparents, mentors, fellow Christians, the church. The builders labor in vain. Now, obviously, it takes a lot to raise a child from birth until they leave the home, become their own adult, become independent, so on and so forth. But doesn't it seem tragic, though, that there are many people who are missing out on the key ingredient of what it means to raise children and to have families and to have children growing up who bless the those who are the builders and are blessed in themselves unless the Lord builds a house so if we leave God out of the equation of raising children and living in families We've missed the whole thing. We have missed the whole thing. So it begins with the Lord. But it's not just the building and the establishing of family. It's the ongoing provision and the protection in the family. Oh my word. So many, many things that we need to be careful about. So many things that are attacking in our society, in our culture. We're living in a countercultural society. We're living in a cancel cultural society. We're living in a constant, rapidly changing culture and society. It's happening so swiftly, does it not make your mind race and your head spin? And so, doing this in raising children and forming families, unless the Lord watches over the city, and here again you can substitute family and hope there. The guards stand watching in vain. All of our provision and all of our protection 
might be empty in vain or useless. Does it not make sense really better to say, God, I need you. I need your help. I need your power. I need your strength. I need your wisdom. I need your direction. I love it when as a pastor and as a church we have child dedication day and we're able to take the parents and, and, and other family members that are there and, and to pray over the child and pray over the parents that God would be able to be so involved in that little young life that they would grow up to be godly in their living. Unless the Lord watches over the city, unless the Lord is providing, unless the Lord is protecting, unless the Lord is totally involved in forming the family, it's in vain. So having said that, what does it take then to live by that? Let's take a look. It takes total dependence. Total dependence. You say, oh, wow. You're really hitting me hard here. Total, complete, entire? Yes. Total dependence. And here I'm talking about and relating back to that first verse. It all relates to the Lord building and the Lord watching. Remember what it says in Hebrews? For without faith, it is impossible to please God. And we must believe that God rewards us for those who diligently seek Him. Then it tells us what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. By faith we trust God and by faith we let God be the one who is leading and guiding and helping us. And listen, a lot of people try to be uh, self-achievers, self-sufficient. I, I pull myself by, up by my own bootstraps as the old saying goes. I'm a self-made man. I'm a self-made woman. I'm a self-made parent. That's not what he's looking for. He's looking for people who are willing to say, God, without you I'm nothing. And with you I have everything. You're all I need. And with you, you and I can accomplish anything. The Apostle Paul came to that understanding, did he not? He came to that understanding. But let me show you something here. Something very positive. And, and I'm sure you've heard this in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 9. Listen to these words about Paul said. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. We are co-workers. We are, when we're linked together with God, listen, we can do it. We can accomplish it. We, we can find the strength and the power and the endurance and the energy and the education and all it takes to build the family. Total dependence is required. And, and it begins with parents. It begins with parents. Listen, we're, we're living in a time where there are so many parents who want to shift the responsibility with their children to anyone and everyone else. They want to give it away. They don't want to bear the burden. They, they, they feel like their children are an interference with their lives. They get in the way of of my success. 
They get in the way of my activity. They get in the way of my freedom. And on and on are so many excuses. And they'll shift the burden to whoever they can find. It may be grandparents, the school, the church, sports, anywhere and everywhere. But total penance is required from parents to <coughs> accept the responsibility and to claim God as their Lord. Come to Him by faith, presenting themselves first on the altar of living sacrifice and allowing God's Word and God's Holy Spirit to empower them and to enable them that they can be the parents that their child needs. If God keeps, God protects, God provides, and God empowers. That is the reward. It said, unless the Lord watches over the city, unless the Lord watches over our family, unless the Lord is involved with the ongoing Every day, day in, day out, activity and life, it's in vain. But because the Lord keeps, God protects, God provides, God empowers, God gives us what we need. And then assurance is promised. There's a reward. There's a good production. There's, there's, there's a, a, a good, healthy outcome. You remember what it said in the Proverbs? Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is older, he will not depart from it. There's been a lot of discussion about that. And, and some folks have taken it sometimes with a wrong emphasis. They see it as a guarantee that if you raise a child right, they will never go wrong. Have you found that to be true? <laughs> I grew up as a church brat. My father was a lay Baptist preacher. My grandfather was a Baptist preacher. I went to church here from the very get-go of being in this world. Three times a week at least. Back then we had Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and then if there's anything else going on, we went there too. I grew up understanding everything that the church taught and the church stood for. And I turned out pretty good, didn't I? Well, that's still up for question with God and with you. But here, let me, let, me, let me just confess to you. I failed many, 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 many times. As have you. But guess what? Hopefully we're here today because somebody gave us the right start. Somebody connected us with Jesus. Somebody showed us what life is really about. And this is what's really important. And this is the very essence of what life is. Our relationship with God and our relationship with one another. It comes at the cross. What that verse does mean is this, is that if we will train up children in the way they should go, and it's here, it's not what, it's, it's, not, it's not your life experience, it's not how smart you are, it's not how well you can live out any kind of a principle of, 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 of parenting and so forth, it's really all about helping them to understand what God has for them, who He is, and how they can have a relationship with Him. If you can get that imparted to children, it will 
never depart or leave them. And it will bring them back to him somewhere later in their life if they leave, if they stray, if they fail. If they fail, they get up. But total dependence is required with parents and if God keeps, God protects, God provides and empowers and assurance is promised. But that's not, that's not all. Total commitment is necessary by parents. We got to buy into it. It's not just enough that God says, this is what I, I command you. This is not what I require you. We've got to buy into it. It's necessary. There's danger of neglect. There's danger of neglect. There's an eternity that may cost if we do not do it God's way. You know, sometimes people will raise the issue about, well, how is God going to deal with people who are from other countries or uh, some country where there's not much development and the gospel hasn't been taken. How's God going to deal with those people who don't know about Jesus? And they always think of that as being somewhere over there in a far distant country. But let me tell you something today. You're just as likely to walk through the streets of Dayton and surrounding neighborhoods and find children today who have never heard of Jesus Christ. Does that astonish you? But we're at that point. You see, because in many ways, in many instances, the gospel is minimized. And it's not getting broadcast. And it's not getting the exposure. There's so many other voices and, and so many other uh, methods and so many other ways. That's why it's important that each and every one of us take responsibility that we teach everyone and we tell everyone about who Jesus is. There's high accountability. There's high accountability. Jesus taught much about children. In fact, he used them as examples. In Mark chapter 9 are a couple of examples. And the first one he's talking to the 12 disciples. And he's talking about the importance of servanthood. And, and, and having your rightful place. And so, picking up at verse 35, sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. He took a little child whom he placed among them, taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me does not welcome me but the one who sent me. He said children are like an example of servanthood and having the right place and having the right posture in living your life. Children are all alone from God. Do you understand what uh, Solomon is, 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 is attributed as being the author of Psalm 127? He said, children are a heritage from the Lord. Offspring a reward from him. God gives us children. He's the giver. They're on loan to us. They're given to us. We are stewards or managers. We don't own them. 
It's not like having your car, your home, your laptop, your, your smartphone. They're not just another uh, possession. They are a vital, valuable, rich life that has soul and spirit and is going to live for eternity. And God has entrusted those precious jewels in our hands. Not to be treated lightly. Well, there's another third thing. Total cooperation between God and parents. God takes the lead. God is the foundation, but He expects us to work with Him. Al, we are partners against evil adversaries. We need to realize that Satan is like a lion on the prowl, seeking whom he may devour. And our children are some of his choicest targets. We all are, aren't we? But you and I, as parents or as grandparents or as the church or as mentors, whatever position you have with families and churches, you and I need to be vigilant and watchful. We are partners together in nurture, in feeding them, in helping them to grow. That they, that they grow properly, that they have the right input into their life. We need to realize who's going to have the greatest influence in a child's life. And then partners preparing God's warriors. Partners preparing God's warriors. Not only do we want to defend them, not only do we want to take care of them, but we want to prepare them that they can take a stand. Because they will have to stand on their own two feet. I hope you take this as a, a positive lesson, not a negative one. Because you see what it is. God is allowing us the privilege of working with Him in the greatest business in the world. And that's raising up those who will live for Him, who will serve Him, and will affect the world in such a great way that the world will be different because they have lived. I close with this. It's, it's an old hymn. I don't think we ever sing it much, but we'd sing it sometimes for Mother's Day, Father's Day, or child dedication. It says, God give us Christian homes. <laughs> 